Hey scholars, happy Fine Art Friday. This is actually the last Fine Art Friday we're gonna have for the rest of the school year. But it's not bad, it's good. You guys get to do summer stuff now, which might be what you've been doing. But you get to choose how you wanna spend your day, hopefully. Hopefully it still includes making art. To help that be a little bit easier, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own art journal. So your art journal can be made with different supplies around your house for using cardboard and paper. It can be different sizes. This one's a smaller one. These are the different sizes. And the art journal can be a place where you write your thoughts. It can be a place where you draw your thoughts. It can be a place where you put your secrets. Art journals are very fun and they're very exciting. You can kind of do whatever you want. And instead of going to buy another one, you can just make one with the materials you have at your house. So join me for this video as you learn how to make your own art journal. I miss you and I hope you have a wonderful summer and I look forward to seeing you again next year. Bye. Hey scholars, um, now we are going to work on making an art journal. So you're gonna need a variety of materials, anything really that you can use. If you have any white paper, um, cardboard, um, scrap paper, just a variety of anything that you have. Kind of just, we're just going to make something crazy. So we're going to start, I'm going to show you a couple um, options. Uh, we're going to start, if you have white paper, you can start by folding them in half. If you fold it in half, this is the size of your art journal. It will roughly be the size of half of the paper. I like m making mine a little bit smaller so that I can take them. So I would actually um, do one more half paper and then this would be the size of my art journal. It's really up to you. So if this is the size you want, go ahead and fold all of the paper that you have in half and if you only have if you don't have a lot of this size paper so let's see I have three of those but then I also have these papers and these are not the same size but it's okay you can do different sizes of paper in your art journal so these are also some things that will go in the journal. And they're really just um, different sizes of scrap paper that I have. But I like them in case you want the color, you can make something with that. You can write on them if you're journal, you're going to have some journal entries. These pieces are too small, so I'm going to put them away for now. And then it depends how many pieces of how many papers you want in your book. So this one, we are going to have, we're going to put these things inside of each other. We can kind of put these guys in between, make sure that they are all the way to the back. And this one will go right here. So far, it's okay that it's not the same size. I really like my art journals a little bit different to kind of make sure that all of the edges are on this plane. And then from here, we can just kind of put these wherever you want. And so this journal is going to be a little different. But man, like I said, I love silly and fun art journals. And then I'm going to put, this one might be a little too short. I have some other paper I can use. I can use this paper. Mm, I have this paper. I'm going to use this one. So this is a full paper, so I'm just going to fold it in half, and it should be the regular size of everything else. And this one, 
I'm going to put right on the front. This is not going to be my cover, but I think that's as many pages as I want for this project. So I'm going to use a hole punch, and I'm going to make two holes. I'm going to do one. See, the reason why I kept going like this is I want the edges all to be on the bottom so that when I do the hole punch, it catches all of the papers. So I'm going to do one here. Let's see if that's too many papers for this hole punch. I think it is. So I'm going to go ahead and take out some of them. And do a little bit at a time. Which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> so that's one hole down there. I'm going to do one hole in the middle. And then one hole up top. And so from here, to make sure that they're all the same, I'm going to slowly start adding more of those pages I took out. And then it'll be easy to see where I need to punch the hole. And then it'll be able to cut it since the others have already been cut. And you keep doing that until you have all of your pages right where you want them to be. I don't know if we could do this one. That one might be too thick, but we'll try it. This red paper kind of moved. And I'm going to go ahead. If you don't have a hole punch, I'm going to show you a different way to do it, which takes a little bit more time. But still works. That one was too thick. This guy. I have my holes done. Now I'm going to put that aside. Now I need to work on my cover. So the cover, I'm going to be making it out of cardboard. I don't know if this cover is large enough or this cardboard is large enough. Let's see. It will not cover all of the pages. And you want the cover to be kind of a thicker material so that it also protects the pages from getting torn or crumbled in your bags. So since that one didn't work, I have a bigger piece of cardboard that I'm gonna use. So if I cut this, fold this, excuse me, and what's cool about cardboard is you can paint it, you can kind of do some different things to it. So I'm gonna fold this, but it is harder to fold. So I'm gonna fold this guy in half. And this one's kind of funny because I used it as a cutting board. So this one won't work because it has holes in it. But this one, this one should be fine. So let's see. I'm going to need to fold it right here. Cardboard doesn't work exactly like normal paper. But it is just very thick. So let's see if that worked. Let's see if that would cover it. It's pretty much perfect. So from here, I'm going to make it a little bit taller on the top and the bottom. I'm going to draw a line here. I'm going to draw a line here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Oh, I would have to do 
do is hold these where I'd want them to go. Use my, I'm going to use a pen and make a circle. And then I'm going to go here with my um, hole punch. And then kind of just bam, here is my cover. If you want to, you can paint it before you put it together or you can leave it. You can glue stuff. It can be kind of like a collage journal. I really like collage journals. Those are fun. From here, your holes should line up. And I'm going to go ahead and stop us right there and then we will bind it together. Alright, so we're going to now bind it. And when I say bind it, we're just going to string it together. I have some yarn here. So what I'm going to do, if you can't get the yarn to go through, I just kind of fold it in half, use a pencil, and push it down in there. And you should be able to pull it through. I go from the top one to the middle one. Flip it over from the middle one to the bottom one. Flip it over again from the bottom one to the middle one. And then flip it over and then I tie this top tail, sorry, in a knot. I'm going to double knot it, leave some space, cut it, and you have your art journal. So from here you might have to go back. Like I said, cardboard's kind of a little bit hard and tricky. Kind of like a new notebook you have to go back through. But these are the pages. And you can use them to draw, to write, to make a little creative journal. You can collage on them. You can do whatever you want, really. I mean, an art journal is really fun to make, really easy to make. And then you kind of get to just keep it and play with it and, you know, do some crazy cool stuff. So that's one. I'm going to show you another one. Um, so this one's going to have some different stuff in it. So these are the papers. that I'm going to use, and it's kind of going to be a little random, awesome, so again if you want, hmm, if you want white paper, you can use white paper, and some printer paper and we'll go like that. Okay, so this one's going to be smaller. So what I'm going to do is fold these papers in half, put them aside. If you just want white paper so that you can draw and decorate it yourself, that is perfectly fine. I like variations and varieties, like a bunch of different things. So I like doing my journals um, to have, I like them to have different things in them, because then I can collage, or I can write on those pages, I can doodle, kind of just go for it, you know, nobody's stopping me, I do what I want, I mean, it's my journal, right, so from here, I'm going to cut on that half line, it's okay if it's not perfect to add some character to your journal. And I'm going to do that for all 
of these pieces. Since you're cutting it in half, you get the option of having more paper. If you want a bigger one, you use more paper. The smaller one, you have more pages. I guess I meant pages. So when you cut them in half, you get more pages in your art journal. So I'm going to keep one open, but I'm going to fold the rest of them. And you could do it similar. You can use a hole punch the way we did the other one. You can use a hole punch. Or if you don't have a hole punch, you can use your... Um, if you use your scissors, I suggest you have a parent there with you in case you slip. But I would just use uh, a very sharp pencil or a pen. And with that you would have to do one page at a time and they might not come out exactly even but again like I said it adds a little bit more character to your book so this is the size of this journal it's going to be kind of small but again I'm going through folding all these pages except for that one that I left open I'm going to use that to measure all the other papers they won't really be the same And if you wanted just a white, clear, not sorry, not clear, plain um, white papered book, you can kind of stop here and follow the other directions. But if you want to um, add more colors, colored paper, you can kind of follow along with me. So I'm opening up putting this in and just building it up. This again, you're going to have to, if you're using the hole punch, you're going to have to do it in stages because this would be way too thick for the hole punch. So I'm going to put that aside. Come over here. I'm going to use that paper. I'm going to measure. Roughly measure. And cut. And then these, these ones that are too small to be cut in half, I'm actually going to come back and pull one of these off. And I'm going to measure this half page. Do you see? So I'm going to measure. I'm going to cut. And this will straight up go either on top like that or inside. So this one would be ready to go. So you don't need to fold them in half. You can kind of do it in different ways. But I'm going to keep that as a measurement too. I think this guy works perfectly. Almost. So I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to cut this person's name off of it. And then bam. That one's good to go. What else do I got? This one, this one's interesting because it's half colored and half um, white. So I can, if I wanted to draw stuff or write stuff, it would be a good, it's a good journaling paper. It's another page. Let's see what else do I have. This guy. I'm going to use this, oops, no, this example. Kind of measure it. Take it apart, cut it. And that would be ready to go too. And then these ones. didn't want the edge, so I'm going to move it towards the middle and cut around that part.
this one probably could have been folded in half and done the way we did our large papers, but I'm just going to show you the paper one. If I wanted to, I could also use this paper measure to see if it works. It looks pretty good, but there's extra over here. So I'm going to cut that off. Seems like this book is going to have a bunch of pages. Um, I'm going to wait on that. But I did want to put some of these in. These pages are fun. Because you can draw over them. These are just out of an old book that I wasn't um, using anymore. You can either draw over them. You can find a poem or a story using the words. Kind of make something up. Um, you can just color it. Or you can look for, kind of just go for it, you know, like look for all the art words, or look for all of the names, or look for all the animals, and just kind of, you could do so much with these, they're really fun. And so this, I'm going to trace, but I'm going to trace mostly the words. So journals are a little, they're super easy. But they're really messy because you do a lot of cutting. Oops. And I'm going to do them both so that I don't have to uh, draw. Yeah. Cool. So from here, and I think these will be my last two pages. We were supposed to do a project using an old book. I don't suggest you cutting pages out of random books. I don't think you should do that. These books I was using for art anyway, so you're collaging with them. So it was alright. I wanted us to draw a picture over them. Or I kind of wanted us to find a poem. There's a really cool project where it's like a uh, poem finding project. You get a page out of the book and you kind of have to find one word that you really like and then look for other words that tie into it. It could have been really cool. It didn't really work out. Maybe next year. Alright, so then these ones folded in half. going to be a big one. Okay, so now we're going to put it together. And the way that we're going to put it together, so right now I have, these are all the white pieces of paper, right, just the plain ones. So if you wanted to, you could do this multiple ways. You can take them apart. If you don't have a hole punch, you can use a pen, hold the paper with both hands, and kind of make a little hole. We're only going to make a hole at the top, oops, and the bottom, like so. So you could do that. You would have to do it for all of these pages. And once you do the first one, it's kind of easy because you can then put it on top of the next one. You can make a little dot in that hole. Let's see. Make a little dot. Let's see, did it work? Through that hole. Yep. And then do the same thing over and over. It gets easier. So for the darker pages, you might have to find a lighter area. Or you could just push it all the way through that other hole. So you don't make that dot. You just use that circ that first hole as a template and kind of move on. So you could do it like that, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. 
it just takes a little bit more time and the hole is smaller. If you wanted to make the hole bigger, you could use a pencil. Hopefully yours is a little bit more sharper than mine. And you kind of just go back through and you stretch it. You can do it like that. That's cool too. Honestly. For your first one, it should have as much character as possible. Meaning it should be as weird and a little interesting as you possibly can. See, I just realized this is even folded in half. So, that is one option. The next option is to do it the way we did our other book. So we put some pages inside each other. We can probably even make two books out of all these papers. Alright. Right? Not too many. And then use... So if we want it to go with this book, what we would do is make um, a mark where I want, always make the mark. If you're doing it separately and you want it to work together, you want those marks. So here I would use this guy. Where is it? Right there. Oops. This you might have broken her hole punch because the other one was a little bit too thick. But so you could do it like that. And this one, super easy. You can just put it next to the next one, make a circle, and that's where the next two holes would be. I don't know if this is too thick. We'll try it. Nah. And so from here, you can do two things. Say I want these two to be one book. You can open this one or open this one and put them inside each other. And that would work fine. Or you can leave them like this and just put them on top of each other and then string it together with the cover. The cover is always the last part. Your call. So now, those in a book are called leaves. I know, right? Like a flower. Um, so yeah, let's keep going with this book. So now, I'm going to add some things together. Bookbinding is really cool, and there's a lot of technical terms and tools and stuff, but honestly, if you can find a way to make your own journal that's fun, that you're proud of, and that helps you stay creative over the summer, it doesn't matter if you're following those rules. What matters is you made something you're proud of, and you're super excited to use it, right? I mean, that's what art is. It doesn't have to be done a specific way. It doesn't have to be, I don't know, what other people think is awesome. It's what you think is awesome. You make it for yourself. I make art for myself. Some people like it. Some people don't. It doesn't really matter. What matters is how I feel about it. And, you know, like, if I make a mistake, that's okay. I go back through. I fix my mistake and I make something different. Or I fix it again and again, over and over, until I like what I'm doing. So this guy, take this one. Make the circle. If you want to get super precise, you can also use a ruler. That's fine. If you don't have a ruler, you could use this some form of measurement. When I say some form of measurement, I'll show you. You can say, all right, so the green part right here, and you can measure all of them from the green 
and you can do it that way. You can use multiple things, and then you can make your hole there on all of them. And remember, you just need your first hole, and then you can kind of go from there. So these are our leaves, or these are going to be a part of our book. And now we're going to work on the cover. So the cover, I'm going to use an old Dr. Pepper can. No, an old Dr. Pepper box. Yes. And I'm going to make sure it... So it's slightly um, shorter up here. I want it to be slightly larger than the pages so that it can protect the pages. So I can't just fold this in half. So instead, I would measure it this way. And I think this is going to be really cool because I'm going to use the part that's bent so it's not going to be too much strain on the cardboard. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to measure, not measure, well I'm going to go ahead and make those holes. Show me where I want those holes. And then I'm also going to make a little line down here where I want to cut it. So, first things first, I'm going to cut it. Second thing, mm, I'm going to do the holes. Okay, so this is one of my covers. Now, I have another piece. I just ripped it. It's okay. So now I'm going to trace. And so, first things first, make the hole marks where you want those to be. Whoops. Make sure you don't let it move when you're tracing it or else it doesn't come out the right size. And then you're going to cut. <coughs> So I cut first, so I have less material to maneuver. That didn't come out completely straight. So I'm going to just make some adjustments. And bam. Now, make the holes. So now we're going to put it all together. So I'm going to put the Dr. Pepper part on the inside of the box. I mean on the inside of the cover. So you don't see it. So you only see the brown. And then I can draw, I can paint, I can do whatever I want on it. So now, if you want to arrange your pages in a specific way, it's perfectly fine. I'm not that picky. So I'm going to go ahead and put these together. Uh, it's going to be a great book. So, again, I have yarn, and this time you can kind of go through one at a time, right? And I have both of them doubled up. I don't need them doubled up. So I'm going to go through that, and then I'll go through this, and then I'll just keep going until I have the cover of the back cover. Bam. And you're going to string it all together, tighten it up. Bam. Now, you can do two things. If you want to, you can just tie it off right here. Oops. You can double, actually, since I showed you the other one. So you can do what we did on this book and go from the top to the bottom, then bottom back to the top. Maybe just do it three times, front and back, and then knot it off. Maybe not even. You can do it probably twice. And then knot it in the back, cut it, bam, done. But since we did that already, I'm going to show you a different way. 
So I'm just tying it and I'm going to double knot it. And then from here, I'm going to leave a little bit of tail so the knot doesn't come off. I'm actually going to use this smaller string since honestly you don't need that much. And I'm going to do the same thing. Go through one leaf or set of pages at a time. And when you're done, you can design it, you can color in it, you can use it as a journal. You can do whatever you want with it. You can give it to somebody. Oh my gosh, people love books. Everyone still needs them. To write stuff down, shopping list, what? Oh my gosh, all kinds of stuff. So from here, pull it tight. Knot it. I did a double knot. Leave a tail. Chop it. Bam. Book number two. And if you don't like the Dr. Pepper, that's fine. You can paint over it. You can paint it before you put it together. But you have your book. You have your journal. And you will be good to go for making awesome art all summer. I hope you guys had fun. I look forward to seeing anything you create. Remember, show me. Take pictures. I love you. I miss you. Bye.